I want to share a couple of the most confusing verses that that I've read. Um, you know, sometimes you read something and you're just like, what in the world is going on? And this is one of those moments. Let me just read them first, and then we're going to talk about it for just a second. Matthew chapter 21, starting in verse 12, says, Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all who were buying and selling there. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. And then he said this strange phrase. Listen, he says, It is written, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you're making it a den of robbers. Like, wh- when I read that, I don't know if you're like me, but I'm like, what are, is possibly going on that could make Jesus so angry? that he's flipping tables and driving out people of his temple and, and calling them that that they're t- calling on them telling them you're making my house of prayer a den of robbers like what is this and then as i began to uncover what this is all about i really think it applies to us and i think you're going to like it um right now uh we are coming up on easter and i don't know if you knew this but easter is statistically speaking the most attended Sunday on average of the entire year for churches across all all of America. In other words, there is more likely to be more people in our church service this Sunday than any other time of the year. That is a huge deal. And so um, the same is true in this context. This is happening at the Passover. It was the most attended celebration, the most attended feast, because it was remembering when Jesus rescued their people from Egyptian bondage and set them free. And so people from all over the place were all coming to Jerusalem to celebrate this thing. And so they would come into the temple, and many of them, because they were making such a long journey, wouldn't have brought sacrifices with them. So you would have money changers, because there were different currencies, right? I, I have different currency from where I'm from, and I need to buy a sacrifice because I wasn't able to bring my animal on that long trip, right? It was too much for me to bring them, so I'm going to buy the animal there. So you would have these money changers and these people who would set up these booths where you could buy your sacrifice and then go in and worship the Lord at the Passover. And what was going on in the context of this that's making Jesus so angry is that you have these money changers who are charging so much to the foreigners who are coming in, to the people who are for out of town, and they're saying, oh, no, 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 it's going to cost you a lot more, and they're robbing them to pocket their own money. And a lot of people would have come in with the right amount of money, and because they're being cheated by people in the Lord's house, they're not able to make their sacrifices. They're not able to properly worship the Lord because someone in the Lord's house is charging too much money for him. And so it's a really sick thing that's going on, and that's what's caused Jesus to get so angry. And in fact, when you hear his phrase, you're making my house of prayer into a den of robbers, um, you'll realize that's not the first time those phrases have ever been used. Back in Isaiah chapter 56 is the first time the house of prayer is talked about. Listen to what it says. Isaiah 56 verses 6 and 7 says, And foreigners, again, people coming from out of, the place. Foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to serve him, to love the name of the Lord, and to worship him, and who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it, and to hold fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain, and I will give them joy in the house of prayer. And their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. And so the phrase house of prayer is used specifically to say foreigners are welcome here. Everybody belongs in the house of the Lord. Now that's good news for us. When we hear that the house of prayer is available to us, it means no matter who you are, what you've done, where you belong, no, 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 no. You are welcome in the house of the Lord. That is a beautiful thing. But the problem is is in Jeremiah chapter 7, you hear the words den of robbers. And Jesus says, you're turning the house of prayer that's meant to be welcome for everyone into a den of robbers. And in this context, it's it's all the way through the first 11 verses of chapter 7. But basically what's going on is people are acting so ungodly. And they're using this phrase, but I'm in the temple to make it right. As if the fact that they are in the temple is good enough to cover their sin. 
it, it's almost like the fact that I just go to church is good enough to keep me sinless. The fact that I take communion every sin. Don't judge me. Don't tell me that I'm sinful. Don't, don't correct me. I go to church. I take communion. And that's good enough. And that's what these people are saying. And God concludes here. Will you steal and murder and commit adultery and perjury, burn incense to Baal, and follow other gods you have not known, and then come and stand before me in this house, which bears my name, and say, well, we're safe to do all these detestable things. He said, has this house, which bears my name, become a den of robbers to you? There it is. And he says, that's exactly what you guys are doing in this New Testament. You've taken my house of prayer, which is meant for everybody, and you've turned it into a den of robbers, and you're literally robbing these foreigners of the opportunity to worship me at the Passover and celebrate with me. And he says, it makes me, makes, it, makes me so angry, and that's what causes him to flip these tables because he says, you can't make this a den of robbers. You can't say, just because I'm in the Lord's house, I'm doing good enough. Here's the question for us. Why do you go to church? Yeah, Easter is the most attended Sunday, but it's not the most unchurched people who come. It's typically all of those members who have been members of a church, but they've just been missing in action. And Easter is that time where they come and they say, no, 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 I've got to go to church on Easter because that's just what I should do. That's good enough. And the truth is, is God wants way more than just your presence. He wants your heart. He wants relationship. He wants your sacrifice. And, and for those who would just come to check a box, I hope that you re-examine that. I'm thankful. I don't, I don't mean to guilt you if you haven't been to church. Please come back on Easter. But don't let that be the only time of year that you're willing to come to church because your church attendance, the reason that you should go to church, should be way more than just checking a box. It should stem from a heart full of love, Love for God and love for other people. In fact, in Matthew 27, or excuse me, Matthew 22, that's exactly what Jesus says. The teacher of the law comes up to him and says, hey, which of your commandments is the greatest? And Jesus answered the question. You know, you would expect to say, hey, all my laws are great. You should follow them all. But no, Jesus said, the first is that you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And the second is like it, you should love your neighbor as yourself. Love God and love other people. And that should be the motivation for you to do what you do. Thanks for letting me share.